Hi everyone, Kim here back with another video on my YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to be showing a, a mixed media canvas using products from the Crafters Workshop, Finnabar and Prima. So you can see the finished piece here. Um, and let's go over first what I'm going to be using. So I have this stamp set from uh, Finnabar. This is manufactured by Prima. And I've just used some archival ink to stamp out a bunch of the images onto a piece of heavy duty mixed media paper. This is from Strathmore. And then I have a whole bunch of little doodads and embellishments, uh, mostly from Prima as well, and then some beading wire. And uh, so just a bunch of stuff that's in my stash. So this project was inspired by this art journal page, uh, which one of my uh, YouTube viewers had kind of caught a glimpse of when I was creating another crafters workshop page and I'll uh, create a link to that down in the description. So she had wanted to see something with me using Finnabar products and so I am creating this for her. So I had this fantastic 12 by 12 stencil from the crafters workshop with all these little doodads and um, you know different types of designs. Love this because you can use part of it, you can use all of it and you know, you don't have to use the entire stencil. I'm going to, because I like all of it so much, I can't decide. So I'm just gonna use all of it. And, uh, but I love these uh, stencils that have a mix of designs uh, with them because you can just use little portions uh, with paint and to create different layers. So what I'm doing is actually creating some texture on the background. And I'm doing that using the light and fluffy modeling paste. Uh, this is kind of one of my favorites. I really like the way this feels and behaves when it's dry. It's much more flexible than the regular modeling paste. And I'm just using the back of my palette knife to uh, put the modeling paste onto my entire uh, canvas board. So it's a canvas board, 8 by 10 from Dick Blick, and uh, it is already gessoed. So uh, not that you would need to use gesso using modeling paste necessarily but it's already gessoed if you wanted to just add paint on top. Uh, gesso is always a good layer when you're using any kind of acrylic paint because it makes the removal of the paint or covering up much easier. So I'm gonna take the excess off uh, with the back of my palette knife, just running that along the sides of the canvas and I will let that dry. So while that's drying, um, I am gonna play with my Distress Oxide inks and I have some little finger daubers here. I love these, great for coloring. And I am going to do some really fast and easy coloring uh, using these little finger daubers. So I love these things. Uh, you can get a package of these. I think I got mine from Simon Says Stamp, but you can probably get them from a lot of different stores. Um, great for coloring small images like this. So I'm going to be cutting all of these images out. Uh, therefore, I'm not taking any care to how I'm coloring these pieces, just you know, getting some color down on these butterflies. And I'll also show you, I love these um, inks because they blend so well. So if I got too much orange there, I can come back in with that yellow dauber and add a little bit more color. These are a little bit more opaque too, the Distress uh, inks. So a little bit stronger coverage than um, the dye inks. But I found that using the archival ink, it was really no problem. It didn't cover up those lines so much that they were, you know, too difficult to see. But if you felt like you wanted the black to pop out a little bit more, you could go over the lines of the stamped images with a, a fine line marker, like a um, Copic has a nice fine line marker. If you wanted to take that extra step, um, I wasn't too worried about that. So I am coloring this little, um, I don't know, person image up here and the dress that's there. Um, I actually think this might be a picture of one of Finnabar's actual campuses because it looks very much, if you look really closely, it looks like there's little metal pieces. I didn't actually end up using any of that bottom part of the dress. I ended up using just the face there, the head of uh, this image. but. I love the whole thing together. I didn't really want to create an exact copy of what I had in the art journal page. I have a hard time kind of, I could never mass produce cards and stuff because once I make something once, I'm like, that's it, I'm done, I can't do it again. <laughs> so um, 
I, that's why I wanted this to be a little bit different, but I'm basically using the exact same techniques and processes that I used in that art journal page and um, much of the same products. So it's the same, just with a different design at the end. So I will fussy cut all of these um, butterflies and the image, you know, all of the little circles and the girl, I will fussy cut all of that out uh, just using a pair of uh, scissors. So um, that's some quick coloring for you. Quick and easy, I love it. Now I am adding a little bit of water onto this because you get those, you know, it, the ink oxidizes and then you also get the little water droplets. So I'm just letting that dry a little bit, picking up the water with a paper towel and then I will dry my paper completely with my heat tool. So now I have all those little metal embellishments and I really wanted to kind of keep, I, I like this white frame that I have. Here's my little head that I cut out and I'm gonna use the wings as well. So, and I found this tag in my stash that I'd just been playing around with and it had the exact same color. So I thought, oh, that's a great home for uh, my, my little frame. And I like the white in the background. So I'm actually using some uh, gesso, Crafters Workshop gesso. So I was showing you the jar there um, I just uh, put that into a pourable uh, container, which makes it easier, but uh, what I'm using is uh, Crafters Workshop Gesso, and I'm just going over all of my pieces with gesso. So I basically want to make all of my metal pieces white, um, and that's so that it really uh, fits in with my white background. Uh, I did need to use two coats of gesso on everything, but actually it covered really well. I didn't have any problems. And so now if I wanted to, I could add paint on top of these um, or any kind of spray. So uh, gesso is a great a vehicle to uh, coat everything with before you go on to adding any other mediums because paint would not stick, would not really show up that well uh, on these metal pieces if they weren't gessoed first. So now I'm gonna do a glazing technique. This is something I learned from Donna Downey. Uh, I love this. I do it all the time. I've got some Dina Wakely paint and I'm just putting that out on my nonstick craft sheet um, uh, with glazing medium. So I have about at the same ratio to paint to glazing medium and glazing medium will make this more transparent, the paint, and will also slow down the dry time. So the reason I'm doing this is that I want that texture to show up more in the background. So I'm using Elephant. That's the paint color from Dina Wakely and it's just a gray. Um, and I'm not, I'm going pretty lightly over this because I don't want it to be a dark gray. I just want some color on there so that, um, you know, you can see that texture more, but I don't want it to look so dark that it doesn't really, I want it to retain some of that white color. And so glazing, oh my gosh, I love doing this. It is so fantastic. And you can do it with any color paint and this will slow down the dry time. So you can, you're gonna wanna put this on to anything uh, you're doing, and then you can see I also use my extra to go over all of my metal pieces, which made it all match. Um, and so you're going to want to let that paint sit on your canvas or your art journal page, whatever you're using it on, for about a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, and then you're going to wipe it off. So I'm using up all my extra paint there on all my metal pieces. And I do have to apologize for a little bit of shadowing. I moved my desk and my lighting is not good, so I need to uh, work on that. I didn't have time before doing this video. So now I've got baby wipes and I am just removing some of the paint and you'll see it's gonna stick on top of the modeling paste a little bit and then in any of the crevices. So the more um, baby wipes that you use, the whiter that background will become. So it's not gonna come off as much on top of the modeling paste. That's gonna hold on to that color a little bit more but then it will really come off on the background, the more, you know, the cleaner area you go to on your baby wipe. And so I'm also doing the same on my metal pieces just to kind of make sure that color all matches. And um, so you can see here with a clean uh, baby wipe, how much more paint I get off from the background. So that is now dry and I decided to use some of my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink on my pieces because I just can't help myself. I love brown on the edge of everything. Um, I just kind of thought it made it pop out a little bit more. And so I'm just going along the edges. 
And this is distress ink. So um, if you hate it, you can wipe it off. And so then I went a little bit over, not, you know, not adding too much onto the background, just on kind of the edges of some of the design, just to help that pop a little bit. And then a little bit along the edges of the entire canvas. I just love the look of that vintage photo. It's so pretty. It's not a super dark color and uh, it adds just a little bit of color. And I, I just love brown. I, I can't help it. I like it, everything edged that way. Uh, so you can tell, so if you if you want it a little bit darker, you could come in with an archival ink and uh, that would be a little bit more permanent because it, it is this is distress ink, it will react with water. But if you don't like it, you can see I'm coming in with a baby white, just knocking some of that color back and some of the areas where maybe it's a little too dark. And you could do that all the time. Um, that distress ink will always continue to react. All right, so I have most of my pieces done um, and I put everything down with a gel medium. You can see here I added my little head and my wings to the back of my frame and just a piece of text there. And then I used some of that wire and just wrapped it around the bottom of the tag and a little bit in a, um, I made a little circle of that under one of those butterflies as well. So I have everything laid down exactly the way I want it on my canvas. You could take a photo and remove everything, but since this stuff is not really touching each other, it's easy for me to, uh, just go ahead and leave it, everything in place, and then go ahead and, and uh, push everything down. So I'm using gel medium to attach everything. Have to tell you this worked amazingly well, holding all of these uh, metal pieces. It, uh, I, I did let it sit overnight and dry, and you know I was able to pick the canvas up, move it around, no problem. So uh, I love the gel medium from the Crafters Workshop. It works great. I am using a good amount on the metal pieces. Uh, to make sure that it holds really well. And I'm just putting everything on with my finger. It's just easier that way. Um, my butterflies, I tend to only attach any glue right on the, the uh, body. I apologize there, I'm a little off camera. Um, so that the wings stay popped up. So I only do that, uh, only apply the glue there on uh, the body part of the butterfly. And then I am layering some of the circle metal pieces and then the butterfly on top and those little circles from the Finnebar, uh, Finnebar stamp set as well, um, kind of layering those. And then I just have some uh, very sticky uh, double-sided uh, foam tape on the back of my tag. And I'll need that foam tape because it's going on top of that metal piece. I need to have that, you know, dimension there. So I'm going to apply all of those pieces and my tag. And I am just about finished. Just about ready to go. So I have a sentiment. This is also from the same stamp set that I have just white embossed on a piece of gray cardstock. And I just kind of made a little tag out of both ends. Forgive my head there. I'm trying to get that lined up evenly. And now I am using, this is some glass glitter. This stuff is awesome. Really, really chunky. And I just want to add a little bit of that to a few areas on my canvas. So I'm just using my brush to apply some gel medium. And this will dry. It's going to look white, but this will dry clear when it's all finished. And you'll see that in the photos. It's all clear. And um, so just picking some of that up and adding a few little bits of glitter here and there. And then just using my finger to press the glitter down into the glue, move it around a little bit to make sure I have the design the way I would like. And this just adds just a teeny bit of bling onto uh, my tag, it's awesome. And you can just pick up the canvas and shake off anything that isn't attached to the glue and that will easily come off, not a big deal at all. So just thinking about some other areas that I want to put this on. And of course, do remember that you do have that distress ink. It will re-react with a wet medium. So you want to make sure that you don't um, overwork that too much. Just, you know, put that spot of glue down and move on. And that is, uh, we're coming to the end here, just about finished up. So here is the end of my uh, canvas. I did add a few little self-adhesive um, pearl dots and that other metal piece there. 
and my canvas is just about done. I love the way this turned out and I, I kept it kind of white in the background. So here's some close up photos. Uh, please visit the crafters workshop for more pictures and all of the products that I used will be in the description below. Thank you so much and happy crafting.